I get it. Okie dokie. Um, and uh, let's see. I can um, bring up the recap and go over what happened last week if y'all are, are amenable. Yeah, just a quick one, right? Yeah. Um, let me see. Whoops, that's not how I wanted to do that. Do different day next week, or do we want to just take the week off? I'm I'm totally fine either way. It, it sounds like it works best for everyone. Just take the week off. That works for me. Is that okay with everyone? Better fucking kill some monsters this time, then. <laughs> like I have insatiable bloodlust. Okay. All right. No negotiations. No talking to people. We don't, don't want to brunch people. Anyone. Hmm. Brunch See what we see? We attack. Yes. <laughs> It's too bad that this area is like the the home of the fluffy sheep people. <laughs> of oh, what sheep people? Fluffy. Oh, fluffy sheep people. Oh, I heard something. What do you mean too different. bad? We got mutton coming up. <laughs> and we can make some fine spun wool clothing. The too bad part comes when it's like they're they're ninety percent fluff. <laughs> so like. It's really hard to kill. <laughs> That's it. true. I like that we're just we're just workshopping a, a you know a D and D race here, just the fluffy sheep people, and and why they're so long lived. Uh, let's see. So since we leveled up, there we are. I, women and I can get into a wild shape now. Yes, that is correct. I wish I could do 
That's right. And um, uh, shoot, what was I going to say? I've got the recap up if y'all uh, are, are ready for it. I don't want to uh, yeah. rush anyone, yes. though. Um, so, yes. Um, last time we started with going to the Church of Dragonrite. Uh, as you entered, the, the, there was, it was flanked by two stone statues that were almost too realistic. Um, the interior with uh, finely inlaid white and black marble was a contrast. Uh, the choir of dragon white right worshippers were singing a page of the Tristine Chronicles in Draconic, like they do. Um, the Tristine Chronicles being a first-person account Bible sacred text. Uh, an elderly elven woman priestess named Linnea stops the choir, acknowledges the, vi the visitors. Uh, what teachings of the dragon gods can we offer you, she asked. Uh, Fenzor says we've been called to help this community. We seek knowledge. Uh, Kalhiri says we are here to reclaim the glassworks and rift because Mildred asked us to. I like that uh, trio of answers. Linnea considers this a worthy cause, gives uh, the group the diary, asking you to be careful and to return it because it is her sister's diary. Um, let's see, rift offers a pearl in exchange kind of as a uh, an escrow or what have you. Um, Kalhiri asks, do you know what haunts the glassworks uh, and uh, Linnea says, the spirits of the dam, Chantico is a god of darkness, brought by detestable beings, perhaps even, brought detestable beings, perhaps even demons. Uh, no group has been brave enough to attempt this. If you quell the evil spirits, I will give you a reward that makes this pearl look like a speck of dust. Are they vulnerable in anything? Uh, was one of the questions. And I think silver and holy water is what we figured out. Um, and so you, you stocked up on both of those things. Um, so you went to the Magogur Ronaki, uh, who is a silversmith. Uh, he was able to enchant the candelabras that you brought with you, as well as, um, sorry about that, as well as, <laughs> um, I think he, he did something else for you related to the silver, and I can't remember. I, either he gave you a silver item or forged a silver item for you, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, That's right. We have, we have now. And so you've got the great sword, which is a butter knife. You've got the uh, spoon, which is a war hammer, effectively. And you've got the fork, which is a trident. Um, let's see. Um, the events they're awakened in ancient evil don't go too deep under there may come a time when you have you can face this but you're not ready yet that was from Linnea um let's see okay uh Val Valley is the sister of Linnea whom was the the prior priestess of Dragon Rite before Shantiko's cult came through and then that was its own kind of uh saga um let's see Mildred uh, uh Linnea revealed that Mil Mildred is way older than any one of her race should be. Uh, don't tell her I said so. Mildred is known to hold a grudge as long as her age. Um, the diary also mentioned ley lines and that a nexus of the ley lines could spring forth a rift or portal. Uh, Duratan grabs the book and skims. He can read anything. 
Glassworks was mentioned even before the advent of Chantico, drew the from, from the ancient ley lines um, beneath the earth. Uh, glassworks was something extraordinary with real magic. Art could be created there uh, that hangs all over the world. May even offer protections. Could be dark magic, but that's not clear. Uh, one half was before Shantiko. One half was after Very Dark. Okay, that was the, the, the diary. Um, desperately Seeking Ronaki. I appreciate that, uh, that uh, kind of chapter title. Um, so you find... Forfis, the uh, the man who sh who um, Renaki had held in the cage, convalescing in the inn, asked him a bunch of questions. Um, directions to Renaki's forge. It's up on old thistle top ruins, um, and you know you you knew how to get there. Uh, Finzer, uh, any challenges around, along the way? And there were rumors of a uh, periton, uh, which is a demon deer with wings. Um, let's see. When I asked, is Renaki in trouble no um but forfis did talk about duratan's dad being held near mount nimro uh and trying to find more information to how to rescue him um let's see and also he left the cuneiform diary um and i don't know where we where we went with that cuneiform di diary i forget if i if i gave that to you or not um let's see send to the gullets yearning for some soup oh yeah so you got some soup for forfus because that was like his one request um went through the forest encountered three lizard folk um you almost were lost in combat and translation at the same time uh but thankfully some uh some expert pantomime saved the day uh let's see there was some fishing that uh, took place um, you heard the hammer, you met Ronaki, he did all of the cool things for you. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and so, so Ronaki gave up a book, not the Cuneiform Diary. And the book wa belonged to Rystrom Kedges, which is half journal, half spell book. Um, and so I, I know at least one of you read it, so you might be able to give kind of the cliff notes of that if you want. Um, Duratan's father was hired by Rystrom Kedges to lead his expedition, expedition into uh, uh, Mount Nimro um, and took about a dozen people. Uh, the journal could offer a clue to where Duratan's father and Rystrom are uh, or where their last resting place is, depending on what their fate is. Um, let's see, we head to Fire Ring to chill and read books. Um, Rift Lift dives for more fish. We relax at our fish fry. Wolf Peck gets a bearing, wants to see it, but decides not to. Sulks a little bit. Oh, for the Periton. Um, let's see. Everybody has dark vision except for Winna. Uh, and then so that was the the, the, the uh, piggyback ride. And then you finally made it to the Glassworks. Uh, and they're as pristine as uh, Ronaki's Forge was dilapidated. I like that way of saying it. Uh, things to keep in mind, smoke when Fizzer tosses the coin volcano in the future, lightning when rift through pearl into the, the fountain, fountain's magic. Why do sit things, forge things, want metal? Still haven't figured that out. Uh, and apparently in a positive relationship with Ronaki, he is your friend. Um, and it's possible that the forge sprites come from the glassworks. So, okay. Fantastic, we are there. Uh, I need to bring up the map of the of the glassworks and i think you all can see is that oh no maybe i didn't switch you back sorry all right now can everybody so see i want to add something because i just sure. completed this one okay we found out last time that it's actually the
the volcanoes um, because no one else wanted them essentially, uh, and they were uh, forced out. Um, and by the way, the the volcanoes are totally cursed. Just cursed as fuck. Like they were basically <laughs> invented by the old gods who were defeated, and then they just like left the volcanoes as like a fuck you, like on their way mm-hmm. out. Um, like they're meant to be bad places. Um, they're the <laughs> Sauron's titties. Um, so, so, <laughs> they, uh, so, they, so the giants took over because no one wanted them, didn't want them anyway, and they got what they needed for somehow out of the mountains. Um, but then some sort of interdimensional rift opened up, and some aliens I cannot remember their name, winged, flying, bad aliens. Um, uh, just yes, thank you. Yeah, Gromax. Uh, decided to take over and there was a big war. And that was what the journaler was doing there in the first place was like trying to discover the war. <laughs> and um, like trying to like trying to document the war. Like, whoa, what's going on with this? Seems someone needs to write this down. And uh, and quickly discovered that like, um, that was a bad idea. He should never have gone there. Um, and w- w- what the journal really makes clear uh, is that um, there's no fucking way we can take on a giant uh, in physical combat uh, um, because many tried in that journal and they were all better fighters than us um and uh the other thing is that a nexus uh if a nexus is beneath each journal this is where i'm extrapolating a bit here nexus is beneath the volcano um and the the sand the the sand point glass factory was mentioned before any chantico nonsense as being a very very magical place and sand point probably has sand and a nexus, it, there might be a nexus of ley lines underneath it, right? Um, which may act as a furnace to create glass out of the sand. So there's, I mean, it would stand a reason that if, that the, if the nexus creates heat, that would be under each volcano, then there might be one sort of underneath the, like acting as a, a furnace for the, so they can put the sand in and make the glass. Maybe. Make, like magical, magical glass. But the problem is that those things also act as a nexus to like a parallel dimension. So um, I feel like whatever is in there, like the, the the damned or whatever, like there might be a, a portal to hell underneath the glass factory. So I'm cautious about this, and I think we need to do some scouting. Well, uh, one one of the people we talked to, like, don't go further than we need to, because then there's really bad stuff. Right. Don't go like further. Like a hell portal. Yeah. Yeah. And we have yeah. holy water. Woohoo! <laughs> um, also, have been thinking about who was who's taking what weapons, um, including the holy water. So we've oh, got like we have, uh, Rift's got Rift's I got the four. Those were distributed though. Who's got the Who's got the candelabra? Finzer. No, oh, I gotta check my I gotta check my sheet here. I know I have the uh, warhammer. Right. Technically, you have two Warhammers because you have a Warhammer and a giant spoon. So you're just carrying a lot right now. The smaller beings get the candelabra. Sure. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, Calhiri. Um, because I'm gonna guess that this candelabra is a little big for me because I'm the smallest. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think when I, when I might when I might do it too, but when is not does not have great um fighting dice. Her her rolls are not good. Um, I mean, it's Calhiri not where your strengths are. I thought Calhiri had the bandoliers of holy water. Right. So what I'm saying is I will tra- and trade you. And here's why. Here's what I'm thinking. So looking over all of our strengths. Yeah. Of looking at who's got good ranged combat. And it's basically me, Rift with magic, and um, definitely uh, Duratan with magic. Actually, he may be the best. Um, but he's also good, good. He's got good fighting. So he can do a little bit of both. Um, uh, I was thinking that we take those 10 holy water vials and hook them up to some arrows and I go Hawkeye on their asses. <laughs> um, it's, it's not an, it, I don't know if it's an elegant solution. Um, it would definitely throw my archery off some, but, uh, since I, I if we're going to be fighting something that could be hell beings, um, I'm not going to be much good in a, in a melee. Um, so I might be able to like provide you know, cover fire, and by fire I mean water. Yeah, I'm fine with uh, Wolfpack having the holy water. Sure. What do you guys think? I'm good. 
works but it's between you two and your characters yeah choice. well i mean we we just need to we just need some time to like make a plan and hook it up um but i would trade you to the candelabra because you could probably do I rolled a 22. And I got um, a 20. We have good perception rolls. Awesome. Uh, so, Rick does yeah. not. <laughs> um, you get to the glassworks. You find the building curiously silent. Um, let's see. Da -da -da -da. All external doors. No. no. Okay, I'm looking for something that would be like, this is how you would describe the glassworks. Someone was interested in looking. But uh, no, this this building looks pristine. There's a number of different windows that would go into it, all predictably uh, uh, inset with uh, beautiful uh, stained glass, um, you know, depict depicting a number of different things. And kind of the one thing that makes it look less majestic is that there's no one central theme. You think probably over the ages they've taken like a replica of something they made at some such point in time. So it's not like one central theme. It's not one kind of unified vision. It's just a bunch of different kind of bric-a-brac stained glass. So in that way, it's a little bit garish, but the building itself seems to be made out of some kind of a black stone. Uh, and uh, as you might imagine, it just kind of absorbs the light and, sh and uh, reflects none. So it does look like this odd, um, you know, dark monument sitting up on a hill. Uh, and, and looks a little bit foreboding for, for, for the uh, fact that it is. Um, as I mentioned, it's pristine. It doesn't seem to have been touched by the hands of time. Uh, and you're not sure if that's, uh, if, if that's some kind of uh, illusion or if that's the, the, the real facade of this place. Uh, but other than that, it looks like everything is intact. Not a, not a window has been broken. Not a, not a wall has been marred by graffiti. Um, not a door seems to have been... Uh, you know, a crowbar to open. Um, some of that kind of cleaves to the fact that this place has been viewed as cursed by the people and, and likely they haven't come in and uh, really messed with it. But you would imagine that over the uh, preceding years that someone, some unruly teenagers or some enterprising uh, treasure uh, hunters would have come through here, but it, it, it just seems like no one has... Um, Set for so much as like laid a finger on this place for decades. Question. Um, inside of my perception, if I may, um, since sure. it's the kind of thing I'm attuned to anyway. What is what is um, uh, you said pristine, and I don't know about enterprising treasure hunters, but I'm interested in like what's happening with the vegetation. Like, are there vines? What's what's happening with the plants growing around? Is there other signs of animal life? There do seem to be just normal signs of flora and fauna. Um, but the curious thing is that you notice that it is all apart from the building. No ivy is climbing up the side. No moss grows on any bit of the building. But much of it grows immediately outside of it. There are uh, trees and birds' nests and all kinds of other things. But the building itself, as you would imagine, some animal, some beast might have decided to use it as a nest, uh, make it it's some kind of a den, but nothing seems to have really, like they avoid it, the vegetation included. Um, so there's this neat like one inch um, boundary between the edge of the building and like anything that grows. Got it. Um, Duratan. Uh, you, if I'm not mistaken, you have a spell that can detect magic like uh, around detect evil good yeah um would you mind detecting like if to see if there's something some sort of force field or aura around this thing that's particularly ominous um so the range is 30 feet for that ish um would that be able to go through walls i'm assuming uh, no, not technically. You'd, okay. You would suspect that the walls here are thick enough to block that. However, the walls themselves do seem to radiate a strange aura. 
<laughs> By the way, this is apropos of nothing at the, of this situation, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you, this is a grown man. Huh? They're between, they're between hey. eight and ten feet tall, and they have wings, and they look like, you know, demon, dragon type people. Cool. But hey. anyways. So, Rift is feeling a little murder hobo and a little <laughs> impatient with this sort of quiet scoping it out. I kind of want to just go open the front door. Uh, mm. uh, I mean, I can I, I go I respect, poke the front I respect door your <laughs> staying in character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Finzor, would you mind grabbing Riff for a second? <laughs> Whatever, I'm like right there with her. Uh, I'm not right. running off yet, but I'm letting you know. I'm get, starting to get kind of antsy because so the walls are radiating some kind of power. Mm -hmm. Do uh, I, I just? I don't know. If going in through the front door is really our our answer here because, um, like, a we're not particularly gifted as fighters. We got one fighter on, and the rest of us are all like magic and like. I play card tricks. Like, I mean, we have, like, I, our skills not are not at, at like, yeah. Um, not I think we should at the very you least. Come up with a plan quickly because Rift and okay. I are too impatient. Okay. All Rift, right. Like, let's get I it. need someone to throw me. <laughs> I need, to, I need, <laughs> I need someone to fight. Look, you want an action? Sure. You can throw me. I need to get up in a window so I can look in a window and see if I can see anything through a window. So, before I throw you on your arm. Poke the wall with my silver trident. So I, I hoist both peck with one hand. I got my silver trident with the other. I'm gonna walk up and I'm gonna poke this radiating field with some silver. Um. So there's a sizzle. It does not diminish the silver or the field, but yeah, there's a sizzle. Maybe we should oh. throw both peck at it. <laughs> I set both back Just down. Just me up so I can like see a little bit in the window and then do it again, like on a trampoline, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, can Volfpex stand on my shoulders? Is their vantage point? We're now like close to the building. Wait, do we yeah. see the door? Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, and I'm sorry, I meant to reveal it a little bit better than than I did, but there's a door right there. <laughs> and um, thanks. Did Rift uh, touch the door? Did Rift touch the wall? Um, I'm going to assume that Rift was true to her word and touched the door. Yeah. Um, and so far, nothing happened. In fact, it almost budges just from like the, the slightest touch. I thought it sizzled a bit. I... With the holy symbol. Oh, you touched it with the holy symbol. I touched the door with the trident, the silver trident. With the silver um, then yeah, I would say in that case, uh, even more so uh, that the door it leaves like a, a kind of like a burn mark. It it's, it even smokes just ever so slightly. Okay, what if I take my war hammer and just swing it as hard as I can at these doors? Even Rift doesn't want to do that. Rift is still. <laughs> I, I'm gonna nudge the You're door. Saying, like, okay. Open the door like wiggled open. We okay, just open the door. Can I? Can I just pop in here? Because before we before we go through the door, I, again, I'm still. I would still prefer to scout, and I feel like that's in character for me to want to do so. But before we go in, can I point out a couple other things I learned about our characters um, that might come in handy so that we don't yeah. just barge in with no plan? Um, number one. Uh, although Kalahiri's best strengths are all in, like, deception and sneaking and illusion and that sort of, you know, left-handed stuff, um, if I'm right and there ends up being some sort of fire magic, and eventually there will be because we're going towards volcanoes, right? Um, I think it's very important to note that she's immune to fire. Ooh. Because of her lineage. Nine infernal. So if someone needs to draw fire, literally, um it might be a good idea that instead of having her like up in the rafters uh, or something, uh, actually kind of up front. Calhiri tanks fire. And the other thing is that if we run into fire, which again is like a theory of mine, um, yeah. uh, we actually have someone, we have a, a, we have a seventh member of the team that we have not met yet. <laughs> Duritan, you wanna, you wanna yeah. talk about it? 
I yeah yeah I can pretty much go uh, into the vessel and visit my genie for up to four hours. Uh, so if we wanted to be really like, I, I don't think we should do this right now for this situation. But I could go inside the ring and you guys could throw the ring or put the ring in someone's pocket. And then I would be carried with them for however long until I come out. Wait a minute. You can't get the genie to come out of the ring? I don't... The water genie? I don't believe so. Um, is just that up for my character to make up with the pact? Or is that... Uh, is there a certain... The I was going to say, with the, with that pact, it, it will usually say, like, you can manifest your your patron in such a way. But okay. if it, I, I will say this. If it doesn't allow your, your patron to manifest in a way that it's physical or that can uh, affect reality, I will say that he can basically project, like, an image of himself and just kind of be, a, like, a hologram. Um, and that would be fine, but he wouldn't be able to, unless your class or subclass says, hey, your genie can come out and whoop ass like, okay. for an hour a day. I it think won't that might that. be later when I level up, I get. Okay. Sounds closer to being the case. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that water genie being on our team. So. Water genie. Yes. Also, I can create fresh water. Oh. Summon it for, um, really? That's one of my early. That's one of my level zero druid oh. hand trips. So Super good to know. That's awesome. Uh, I, missed, I must have missed that one. Water grave. Oh. I feel like that's what allows me to travel inland as yeah. a sea elf because um, I'm essentially constantly misting myself. You, you're just walking around all moist. You're yeah. just like constantly clammy with like a small like water skin around you at all times. <laughs> that is gross. I am amphibious and I am proud of my amphibious <laughs> nature and I squirt some water at you. <laughs> you do one of those oh. like when you when you you get water in your hand and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can yeah, I like water out so I just I feel like a cat that just got on the furniture. Like <laughs> I can still huck you at this church glassworks thing, glassworks event. All right. I, here's I, a, here's I, a, a Suritan, I do think throwing the gnome at this point is a good idea. Here's a here is another idea. Um what I could do is, since the animal life around seems to be okay, um, I can find a bird. There's got to be a bird around. I don't really care what kind, right? Sure. I can communicate with animals. I can get the bird to go to the window and then communicate to me what it sees. It yeah. may not be very precise. It may not It may not know a lot of words, you know, to describe it, but I do want to know if there's something bad behind the door. Okay. Um... I hope that you're not upset with what happens uh, now. Oh. The bird appears to be plucked from the window, and uh, you you hear a lot of rustling, and moments later, uh, it is tossed out as a carcass, uh, mostly clean down to the bone. But do you think there's any bad guys? <laughs> okay. You, um, you hear some snickering. You didn't even make me roll for a spell, man. Okay, sure. Yeah, you uh, hear some maybe. snickering from in, from inside the uh, the building. Okay, so you guys still want to just run into the front door, <laughs> or should we take a second? I have no idea what else to do. So, um, um, I will say that in addition to that. I, I do have create water. I also have, I'm pretty sure I chose cure wounds or healing word, one or the other, one of the healing ones. So I'm like, I'm ready to heal us. And okay. do you have, do you, have, you got start for one? Stay in the back if you're the only healer then. 
true though. But you have, but you have. Look, you've got really good ranged magic, the guiding bolts or something. Um, so you you might do well in the back, and I'm going to stay in, in the back as well because we can just attack from behind. That's cool. I still I have have the trident ready, and I'm ready to leap over all y'all. <laughs> So, uh, whomsoever decides to put to peek into the door sees an empty hallway, the interior of which seems to be a stark white marble, not unlike the, the marble that was used in the creation of the Dragon White Bright Temple. Um, and just the starkness and the, 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 the uh, monochromaticness of it is just a little odd uh, and unnerving. The doors themselves seem to be made of the same marble, but black uh, and a little bit more of a contrast um you notice that there do seem to be what appear to be odd looking bloody footprints that are like about this big in this room but um other than that there's, there seems to be no activity they're about this big little but tiny yes like gnome tiny like gnome? smaller than a gnome i would say Oh, no. toddler feet covered in blood. Trick us. Oh. Are the tiny bloody you know? footprints the track of only one creature? Uh, that would be a reason to make a survival check. Or nature. Um, Duratan, you got pretty cool, good survival. Um, do you want to want check of ours? I got good nature. Oh, it's a Finzor. You do too. Oh. Uh, Duratan, I will tell you this, uh, they look weirdly like bird feet. Okay. Like about the size of the bird that we sent in? Actually, very similar, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've got the, I've got the highest survival. We're making, if we're making survival rolls, I'm going. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, it's me and Finzor, uh, we have the highest survival rate. Oh, All right. Um, yeah, you have a feeling that um, this wasn't a bird, although it has very bird-like feet, um, but you're not sure what it is. Finzor, you actually think you've seen this before. Um, there are rumors of a creature from the abyss. It is called a lassay, and um, I will show you what they look like. And this is for illustration purposes. So don't be like, oh my god, there's a giant monster there, because it's not. Because um, people do that all the time. I show something huge, and then they're like, oh my god. Uh, if it would just, oh, there we go. Um, but they look like that. Oh, dear. Oh, a tiny Ant-Man. And uh, they have hey, been where, known where you, Why can't I see that? Please. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, scroll, scroll uh, right on the picture. Okay. Aww. So they've known to be extremely vicious. They're only about this big. They're not especially durable. Like, you could probably smush one with one well-placed punch or club hit, but they're also nasty. They've been known to uh, go for eyes and tongues and uh, throats, so they they know how to how to ruin your day. Um, so they 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 can be dangerous, but they are also are not especially tough to to destroy once you've got your hands on. Zeratan likes Fish jumping too. And sorry, was someone going to ask a question? I was just asking if you could spell the name. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Thank you. <clears throat> there we go. There are some who would call them the least demon, but um, they're also not. You don't you don't want to run into, into them in a dark alley. How tall are they? They're like maybe a half a foot tall. Okay. Um, Rift needs a beer, so uh, I'm gonna go with whatever you guys decide. Uh, <laughs> No, I apologize. It is uh, between one and a half to two feet tall. So it's it's a, quite a bit bigger. So I apologize that the, the, the footprints would be bigger uh, commensurately. That's that's like I could fist fight it. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so what we're dealing with, what we know, is that there's a white marble floor, and did you say bloody footprints from this little ant critter? Yes. Cool. Um, and they are going in, not out. Um, weirdly enough, they just seem to be going in, like, various directions. So you think that one of these creatures kind of, like, has been meandering through this hallway? Bloody. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to step in the door. All right. So you step in the door. There are, of course, these doors here. And you're able to kind of get an idea that there's a door here. And stepping in, you get a little bit better of a view. And see yet another door here. Where? I don't know if you see where I'm, I'm uh, getting you the, the radar. Oh, all the way over on the side. Okay. Um, from the relative silence of before, just through this, these doors here, you hear the ringing of um, a hammer on metal. Do we all hear it? Yeah, everybody does. It's not, it's not quiet. Unless you're like way outside the, the doors or whatever. Should we follow? I kind of think I want to avoid that one for now. And I think I want to walk down the hallway. All right. Such a bad murder hobo. You can always turn left first is what I learned in Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'll follow. I'm going to let you kind of... Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, you can you all can move your characters up now. Yeah. The Calhiri and Rifter behind Winners. Y'all can come in. Okay, I'm gonna listen to see if I can hear anything behind any either of these two doors. So you also hear the uh, kind of hammer on metal sound through here, and this room is uh, very quiet. There's really no sound coming from behind the doors. Can I do a perception check at the door? Um, at the quiet door? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or is that unnecessary? I don't know. This is my. I don't know what. No, I, I mean you. You certainly can. It's it's definitely a cautious thing to do. What about roll? What is? Oh, that's a really good. Mm. Yeah. Um, investigation is for like a very fine search of something. So instead of just listening you might try to like piece clues together or decide if this door is trapped or uh, uncover whether or not something has been hidden um, as opposed to just kind of like a survey of the room or just like kind of uh, uh, listening for sounds. Um, but Good call, though. with that perception roll rift, you do hear almost imperceptible snoring in here. Mm. So at this point, that one first. Oh, right. Can we sneak open the door? Um, give me a stealth check. The quiet door uh -huh. or the large one? I want to open up the quiet, quiet. one first. Yeah. Okay, Calhiri is mad fucking stealthy. Calhiri, you want to open this door for me? I do. I want to kill whatever's in it in their sleep. I understand. Where's that murder hobo? <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> oh, there she went. <laughs> She's got her own little murder hobo. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where easy stuff out first. <laughs> so this room appears to be kind of like a display room where all the finished pieces of stained glass were stored before they were either sold or displayed to be sold. Um, Bottles, window panes, and glasswork art are the primary contents. However, um, Rift, with your um, awesome perception check, uh, and by the way, Calhiri, you did a, a fantastic job of opening that door <laughs> super silently. Um, <laughs> if, if someone wasn't watching you do it, they wouldn't have realized that you opened the door. Um, yeah. But you spy in this corner 
what appears to be one of the Lassay creatures asleep. I'm sorry, can you show me the corner again? I see it, I see it. Yeah. So I'm just going to say it's there and it's sleeping. And just because it's relatively small, it just doesn't make much noise sleeping and snoring, but it's, it is in fact snoring. Uh, I want to um, sneak up on it and smush it with my Warhammer. Hold up. <laughs> uh, this, I mean, I think this thing could be caught and might be useful for in no! counterpoint. No conversation! No friendship! We are killing stuff today! <laughs> Wow. I mean, it might help us kill stuff more efficiently. You don't know. Maybe you don't even know. And this could be a eusocial creature. We could be a hive of these things. We need to. We need to. Like, we need to. No one knows what this. What what this thing's old natural history is. Is it going to summon a whole bunch of shit? It. Oh God. Uh, I'm not going to try to tame it. I'm going to try to take it hostage. Okay. Be a not, I mean, I'm going to be behind you, though, in case it goes bad, so I can smush it with my warhammer. I got a net. Well, I, I think we should use the net. Remember, this thing is almost as big as me. Like, I, I would be happy to, like, I mean, I could do it, but I don't know what this thing's strength is. It, it, uh, it said it was flimsy, but, um, uh, like, mean. I've never seen one of these creatures before. Mean as fuck. Is it? Yeah. I mean, is it a monster? Is this something we even want? It's to a with? demon. Yeah. Dude, we want to just smush it with our. Well, wait. I have that mirror shard, and if I slay it with that, I get a replica of that monster to help me. Or As a matter of fact, you do. That's yeah. how we use it. That <laughs> is a fantastic idea. So we'll have some on our crew, but I gotta kill him first. Winna does. Go Winna. <laughs> All right. So, I. How about Who's this? Now? <laughs> how about this? I quietly motion Winna over. I hold up my net. Winna points at her dagger. Uh, so we kind of. Sorry, my little murder hobo was. Um, and so Winna and I, we're druids, you know. We. <laughs> We need each other. So we make this plan. We're gonna I'm gonna huck a net over it. Um, which will make it easier for you when uh when I assume you can see a bit where there's a there's a window probably. Moonlight's yeah. coming. Okay. Um cool. So yeah. Ready? All right. So this is probably gonna be the well, it's not the first attack roll, but the first uh attack roll of of, of uh consequence. Uh, because if you miss, it's crazy things could happen. But go ahead and make me an attack roll with your mirror blade. Feels weird that Winna is the first. <laughs> it's totally fantastic. <laughs> I believe Lord of the Rings taught us that the most unlikely people can change the course of the world. That your stature True. is no mark on your impact. Yeah, and halflings are fucking cold-blooded killers is another thing it taught us. <laughs> what do I... Where FB advantage? Since it's a uh, sleep. It definitely would be with advantage. Um, on your character sheet, you should see where it says actions. And I don't know if you've equipped your mirror blade, so that might make it a little tricky. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is if, if you have a knife, you can click on the knife and use that to make an attack because it, it's basically the same thing. I just see. Okay, so under action, mm -hmm. like on the actions tab, you can go to action. That it should list the weapons that you can attack with. And if it doesn't, we might have to change that. Sometimes you have to go through and equip them in your inventory. Yeah, I only see unarmed strike. Yeah, so go to your equipment. And you're going to see a long list on the right-hand side, and you're going to scroll down. Uh, you're probably going to want to find your armor, which I think is like leather armor or hide. And then you're going to find like a knife or dagger. And you're, there's going to be a little box next to them, and you're going to want to click the box until it's filled in red. Or potentially another color. I'm sorry. So I went to inventory and then... Right. So in your 
list of inventory. Mm -hmm. One of the things in there should be armor. It'll, it might say. I see manage equipment, I see starting equipment or gold, and I see add items. Oh, you haven't even added items. Um, well. Do I gift my shard? Let me see, I think I can fix this if you give me one mm. quick moment. Yeah, I haven't added anything either, so I. Yeah, that's very funny. Um, and it's it's easily missed, so don't feel bad, but uh, there is a point during character creation where it asks you add starting equipment or add starting gold. And if you skip that, or if you add the starting gold instead, then basically it uh, doesn't give you any of your normal items. Uh, but I can, as I mentioned, I can fix that. So give me one quick moment. I figured out, like I have my backpack and bedroll and all that stuff rations. Uh, I have... The trident and a net. I just figured that out in the short bow because I guess. Um, and then how do I add a special silver trident? Or do I just add, say that's the trident? Yeah, that just is the easiest way to do it. But just like you, you could add a note that says that it's um, silvered. Got it. Hmm. I'm sorry, my computer doesn't play well with OBS, which is what I use to stream, so it's uh, making everything slow. Um, equipment. I see. Okay. Here we go. Starting equipment. Uh, I might ask you a few questions because it gives you a few options. Uh, wooden shield or weapon? Um, wooden shield. And a scimitar or a different weapon? What is a scimitar? It's like a curved blade. If you've ever seen like uh, a thousand and one Arabian Nights or like, you know, uh, which includes like Sinbad and, and all those old, old stories, they've got like those very thin little curved blades. That's a scimitar. Uh, or another weapon? Mm -hmm. Another weapon. <laughs> All right, so you have the choice between a dagger, a club, a great club, a hand axe, a javelin, a light hammer, a mace, a quarterstaff, a sickle, a spear, or an ikawa. Ikawa is just a fancy spear. I want that. Okay, good choice. Uh, let's see. And this is just an esoteric option, but this is your druidic focus, basically what you focus your druidic magic through, kind of like a wizard's wand. Do you want mistletoe, a totem, a wooden staff, a yew wand, or uh, like some other thing? And you, you can kind of like, that's kind of like dealer's choice. Mm, I like the wand. That works. Um, right. My family tree. And... <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> So I'm adding your equipment and I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to equip your armor and your weapon. And we're also going to just real quick add, oh, and your shield, better do that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and give you your, your mirror knife as well. And it's just doing a little loading dance. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I just want to point out that while everyone was bitching at me for taking up too much time <laughs> getting ready for this, some of us didn't even bring our shit to the battle. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill it with the mirror shard. Oh fuck! Where's left my whole bag back in old thistle top? 
And then I, I'm just feeling in my memory, what did I say? It can store a number of different forms. Is that right? I think it was two of the monster. I took pictures. <clears throat> All right, so I am, okay, so I have added that, and now under your actions, you should see mirror shard, equal, uh, and unarmed strike. If you hover over the um, the weapon, it should give you like a, a, or no, hover over like the, the cross swords in next to it, and it'll give you a little red uh, dice uh, with a B on it, and you click on that dice, and it will effectively... Uh, go through the motion of like rolling the attack and damage for you. Ooh, over the dagger? Mm hmm There's like two cross weapons. It's like just a little symbol and you like hover over that and then you click on the B dice. Okay. Yep, they did it. Awesome. Um, that definitely hits because this creature is an actually... Just, I, I should have told you to uh, shift or whatever, but I'm just going to do to kind of do what it would have been to do that for you. Um, and the funny thing is that it actually almost doesn't even matter because if you hit, you crit. When a creature is dead asleep, uh, any, any hit from five feet away is a critical hit. So you also do an extra D4 damage. Um, and let's see, what does that come out to? It comes out to that much. And um, you basically kill it in one strike. You just bring your dagger down on it, and the creature uh, goes from a snore to kind of like a, a strangled uh, gasp and dies. It then kind of shrinks and gets sucked into your blade, and it becomes a mere uh, servant. So you can you can summon it now if you want, or you can wait until later. I think I'll wait until we find more bad guys. And then, does anybody need me to add equipment to their character sheet? Uh, I just sort of typed in my my holy water bomb arrows. I just modified the things I had. That works. Um, and that's something I can just do in the background if you need me to. But just let me know if I'm cool to do it. Uh, but yeah, you have destroyed this Lassay demon. Um, and while well, normally destroying a, a demon usually leaves behind kind of like a um, like a layer of soot and the smell of sulfur, this has not done so because you sucked it up. Yes, winner! Woohoo! We killed our first thing. <laughs> Very bloodthirsty there, Ginger. Yes, I love it. Keep going. So, um, but otherwise, this room, though. Um, no, it's not uninteresting, but there's not really anything going on in here. Uh, if anyone has, uh, well, I don't know, if you if you have any kind of a background that you would know about art, you would have an idea of like what these things are worth. But there's a really good chance that you could take all of this into town and sell it and make a real, like, especially during the festival, you could make a really good, um, you know, amount of money from it. So I'm thinking Cal Heary with her criminal background would mm -hmm. be like oh yeah we should take this shit later but later yes on our way out we should grab this shit and sell it ish is there are there three doors leading out from this room uh yes in fact uh this door as a matter of fact would appear to lead to the outside okay i want to listen what's behind this door where i am right now all right, let me see that door being, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, um, go ahead and give me a perception check. <clears throat> Seems like it's, uh, the, the coast is clear. It's too bad because every time you guys roll, it makes that whoop whoop, which is the sound of the police. Like every time I hear whoop, <laughs> I'm like, oh fuck, who found us? Like, that's my favorite sound in hip hop. 
Yeah, All right, yeah. if no one else is going to perception check this, then I'm going to bust on through. Okay. Go for it. I, I presumed you would, and it just seems to be an empty hallway. Okay. Oops, um, it is happened. laid with the same white marble, uh, although there are no bloody footprints in this one. Okay. I'm going to listen behind this door here. That one there... Um, Let's see, I'll even say that one's open and it's just a storeroom with the various different like supplies and such. There's not anything especially interesting uh, at first glance. When uh, uh, at first glance, at first glance sounds tricky. Um, now I want to do an, an inspection. Sure. Uh, I'm going to do an inspection on that because I have good investigation. Yes. There we go. All right. You, um, it, it's a little tricky, but you managed to find it. Being so low to the ground is helpful in this case. The, hey. you can call me short. <laughs> <laughs> the um, edges of the wall at the very base of the, of the ground, like basically where the wall meets the ground, um, are inscribed with uh, the infernal language. Um, someone came through here and basically uh, wrote out this kind of infernal thing and carved it into the wall. Uh, you don't know for what reason, but you could hazard a guess. Uh, instead of hazard a guess, why don't I ask one of the two people who speaks infernal or really reads it? Um, uh, Calhiri, you, you, you both speak and read it. Why don't you take a, a gander? So Calhari's coming around the bend here. She has to actually. Real quick, Winna, is this you still by the door? Yep. I, I'm on the icons. I am with us now. <laughs> <laughs> she was just shuddering. It's her first kill, you know. <laughs> yeah, had to go outside. What have I done? Air afterwards. Um. So. I killed an ant. <laughs> Ish. Uh, do you want me to roll something or just read it? Um, no, you, you can go through and read it, but it is, um, there is a, an art form called diablery, uh, which it sounds evil and some people can consider it to be evil, but it is the, uh, kind of art form of invoking ruins. Um, and it is written, so it can be written in different languages, but this one is written in the infernal language. Uh, and effectively, it is to call upon the power of the uh, of the underworld, uh, and that is what has been done here. You think that this is some kind of a beacon, whether it's uh, this beacon is calling out throughout the like you know um, across the the dimensions, or just within the world and just attracting the evil into this area. Uh, you think that you might be able to undo this, but you would have to do it in a way that's safe. Uh, if not, you could trigger some kind of a cascade of power. Okay, y'all. Uh, so this is serious. And so let's remember the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does Calhiri know how to undo it? Um, you might if you made an arcana check. We've got we got some uh hold on let me check my we got some good arcana people that might be able to help. Oh you got great arcana. Yeah, you go for it. You you know enough not to mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we can't just write in infernal like sucks after it. <laughs> um so I, I, I also do an arcana roll. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want, I don't want you right now, but you do hear a much louder voice coming from this direction. And it is an inferno, but whereas these creatures kind of like, you don't know that you've really heard them too well, but like they speak in this kind of munchkin evil voice. This speaks in a baritone. Whatever this creature is, it speaks like several octaves lo lower than most humans can make. I can really. And it sounds, it sounds like the noises that Hubert makes run backwards on a record. Ah. Wait. 
Did you say Qbert, like the little hoppy guy? Yep. What does he sound like? He, he does, like, if you've ever Boing. watched Wreck-It he does the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's not accurate, but, you know, you get the idea. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Um, and, and and that's on the other side of a wall. If I'm, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. you you hear it on the other side of, of the wall. How about we just keep moving? Well, we have nowhere. There's. Wait, are we done? Yeah, this corner. Are we done looking at the stuff now? Yeah. Okay. Can I um quickly poke my head around the corner? Um. Yeah. So you can you yeah, I'll, I'll say that you look all the way down the hall. Um. And uh, basically, see just another hallway. And then there's a, a handful more rooms to explore if you would like. You hear something kind of rustling with the doorknob here. I don't know. Wait, back where we came from? Yeah. Oh, something's chasing us. Well, you, maybe. It's hard to say, but it's definitely coming in your direction. The, the question is, do you want to get the hell out of there? Do you want to hide? Do you just not even want to deal with it? But then, like, these are all questions to ask. Yes. Yourself. Well, and his body, or do you want to keep exploring? Did his body stay there when we killed him with the mirror shard? Or does his body get sucked up or whatever? Yeah, it got, like, absorbed okay. into the mirror just shard. Gone. No way. Yeah. Uh... Say we just keep going then if they're not going to figure out that we, we've done anything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to find out what that is. We're going to have. I do not want to fuck around. <laughs> right. Huh. We're going to have to kill it sometime. Fuck around and find out is what I say to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, regardless of all of that, do you want to like double back and, and kind of face this creature, whatever it might be, or. Do you want to um, continue on and just like be wary of this thing and try and figure out what it is when it gets to you? So I'm in the back of the group here. I've got a net. Theoretically, if something came at me, I could at least trip it up long enough to figure out what it is. Um, so I can be rear guard if we want to keep exploring. And uh, my attention is just turned behind us. Um, so you guys will have to grab hold of my something and pull me forward as I walk backwards. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Typical CEO putting all the trust in a net. <laughs> 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 what couldn't be solved with a net? I don't know. That's all we do. I mean, it <laughs> hasn't failed me yet. So. Yeah, it's up. You catch food with it. I do. It makes a good hammock. I, it's Yeah, right? Trips bad guys. Something to sack. You can exactly, exactly. Whip, you know, and then whip something <laughs> your friends with it. You know. <laughs> Rat tail. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah, let's let's keep let's keep going. I mean, we haven't found any factory to this glass factory yet. I, I get the sense we're in the administrative wing the or something. I'm gonna look the at the this door. <laughs> let's see which door. I'm sorry. This one right here, where I'm standing in front of. Cool. Um, so the, the good news is that uh, I'll kind of give you these ones for free. These are uh, relatively mundane. You kind of look through there. Um, and just for the, for the interest of not needing to have you, like, you know, scrap through every square inch of this place, there's nothing here except mundane supplies. In fact, one of them has cleaning supplies. Um, and in contrast to the rest of the building, the things here have aged. So, like, there's a mop that's been kind of like the wooden handle has basically become brittle and, and old uh and the cleaning supplies have kind of like lost their efficacy because they're just kind of, they've been sitting around for so long um mostly uh but yeah there's just like a bunch of really like these things have seen the, the hands of time um that's it all right what about this one down here at the end of the hallway uh, let's see. So, presuming you you just open it willy nilly. No, I'm listening at the door. Okay, give me that perception check. 
echo here. Uh, meanwhile, anyone who stayed behind, you hear that same weird baritone, backwards talking, evil voice. Um, and it's not urgent. It's not like, you know, stalking through the, the area, but it seems to like be thoughtfully walking around and saying something. Um, Dohiri, you might actually understand what it's saying if you want to kind of give a, a listen. Um, I do. So I won't make you roll because you're basically close enough to just kind of catch it by putting your ear to the door. But this voice and like this very, very you know, crude language, uh, not crude, like poorly constructed, but crude like these are just guttural growls and and noises um basically is saying where is that little rat i thought he was here i was gonna make him do work um meanwhile up at the front <laughs> i can't percept worth crap <laughs> maybe let me try yeah, it seems, like, again, just, uh, it seems like the coast is clear. Uh, that worked for us last time. Yeah, okay. I rolled a six, you guys, so it's always going to sound clear to me. Oh, Does yeah. Uh, I love, yeah, let me roll. <laughs> this is not a one. You, you know, you're not deaf. You're... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Looks man. Looks great to me, too, guys. I don't know. I, <laughs> looks like another closet. Uh, yeah, you, you, like, it's like putting your ear up to a shell. You just hear the ocean that's so soothing. <laughs> All right, uh, op I'm opening willy-nilly then. That's right. Uh, <laughs> there it is. So the good news is that this area is empty of living people. The bad news is that it is full of uh, skeletons and dead bodies. That seem to, as as the cleaning supplies have just been touched by the hand of time, uh, um, there are um, skeletons that were clearly mutilated in some way when they were killed. Heads pulled off of bodies, um, rib cages torn open. Uh, obviously, it's it's blunted a little bit watching these, like looking at these skeletons because they've long since died. But uh, the way that they're all kind of uh, laid out just makes it seem like they were brutally murdered or somebody just took a bunch of skeletons and decided to play with them and make them look like they were brutally murdered that might be potentially the better option of what could have happened here but uh, you know obviously that's uh measures and degrees uh but this looks to have been at one point a mess hall in fact there is still um the dehydrated uh you know uh, massively aged remains of food on the table as if whatever happened to these poor folk happened in the middle of a meal. This glass factory is not up to OSHA standards. Huh. Like, just, you know, I want to find, like, something that says, like, we have gone, like, zero days without an <laughs> infernal <laughs> investigation. A thousand days. <laughs> a thousand years of inspection, so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, oh shit! I think that skeleton is the health inspector. Um, <laughs> Could we now do an investigation to try to figure out what? Let's happened? Do, I'm going to do an. I'm going to roll for investigation. Oh, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. Yeah. That's all right. Good one. Should get something out of that. <laughs> um, let's see. Does anyone want to try? I want to make sure just before I start telling people. Okay. Uh, Wolfpack, you actually managed to find a handful of things. You find a scroll. You're not sure if it's magical or not, but it seems to have been like under one of the bodies. Uh, and you also find a ring. Um, the ring is made out of platinum, which is a very valuable uh, material, but also seems to have more writing on it. Uh, you only know because you just saw that evil writing, or well, I mean, let's not Let's not uh, um, brush with broad strokes. The infernal writing, not necessarily evil, um, that was on the uh, in the storage room, uh, just a few rooms back. Wolfpack is smitten with this ring, just absolutely fascinated, and crouching in the corner, begins to <laughs> paw and stare at it. Precious. Um, it it also even appears to have what a, like a, a signet 
it's like whatever you do that is like it's a signet ring um can we get duratan uh if you're yes yeah. um yeah yeah can you do a magic uh evil detect evil on this thing i mean okay oh wait obviously it's fucking evil uh, we don't even need that it's uh, clearly this is an evil fucking ring um i'm guessing no one should put it on but i kind of want to um after all i should die right yeah. um <laughs> more to the point if somebody wanted to make a history check uh, oh. that would be the, the more apt here I, have, um, oh. I, I will tell you this for free even though i should has got the history but the the ring is not magic it is it does not radiate magic it does not seem to have any kind of innate glow or or you know spell fire to it oh it just um, seems like a topic bullshit is a uh, yes that is a magnificent history role. Um, and actually, I shouldn't say yes that it's hot topic bullshit because it's actually a finely made ring. On top of all of that, it's actually like platinum, <laughs> very nicely made. But anyways, when a, you know, A, this has iconography of Shantiko. Uh, B, this appears to be uh, made especially for uh, cultists, someone of, of high rank. Uh, and C, it seems to be inscribed with like a, basically a verse from the uh, the whole the unholy texts of Shantiko, kind of the like if Shantiko had a Bible, kind of sort of does. That's what this is. Uh, just kind of a short little excerpt from it. It's like the John three sixteen, but like it points to something like real vile. Do we want to know what it says? Um. Let's see. Uh, yes, and because there's people who can read it, I'm not going to make you go through any kind of ringamarole. But uh, effectively, it says something. Say ringamarole. I did say ringamarole. Okay. Oh, no, okay. and you'll you'll learn this about me really quickly. I'll, I I say all kinds of uh, old timey words like uh, ringamarole and uh, not too shabby. Ringamarole. Okay. Wait. You, okay. Did you make that pun by accident? <laughs> Because okay. it's rigmarole. I did. I did rigmarole. make that one by accident. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That's even better. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nora and I saw it at the same time. We were like, wait, did you just? <laughs> <laughs> I like a good pun, and I'll usually go for a really good groaner, but this that, that was completely unintentional. I think I'm just Keep that one in your back. back. Keep that yeah. one in your back pocket. You're going to have a lot of rings and D&D in your future, so oh, yes. hold on to that. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to make a magic item that is the ring of Merle. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think like we're doing some ring of a role play right here. Yes. Oh my god. All right. What does the ring say? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm writing this out, so uh, uh, bear with me here. Um, Um, so I'm going to type this out so you can you can copy and paste it as you like, but I will also read it. Covet the unsightly, for it is your window into the darkness that is my form. Shun the light, for it illuminates detestable beauty, which is my antithesis. That's a lot to put on a ring. That was my grad quote. <laughs> <laughs> you were right before me. I was so close. <laughs> I was going for high school yearbook, but you... Ugh. Too quick for me. We were just talking. I mean, yeah, like why? Why are we gonna? Why? Why do you want us to copy and paste this? We're gonna put this as a Facebook status update. Like, well, well no, I mean, I would have Jen was the put it into the notes or something. Yeah. Um. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we all kind of agree that we're gonna need some sort of light casting, lightiness in this upcoming? Like most of us see in the dark, so we just haven't been torching it. But like, starry form could help. Who knows? I, I, I don't like jealous? light. Uh, you know, maybe not yet, but maybe when it's, in, when it's necessary, I think it'll be coming handy. Yeah. Um, and then just to give you an idea, this door slammed shut once more, and you hear that same like creepy muttering as it makes its way through here. 
basically you can kind of hear it move through the hallway. Uh, and then there's a tense moment where it starts to open the door here um, and kind of jostles the door, um, realizes that it is locked and then moves on. Phew. Um, Benzor, you want right. to lead on? It looks like there's more to see. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going down here. I'm going to listen to the door on my right. Go ahead. Hey! Nice. Very nice. All right, so um, th these are kind of uh, also freebies, so I'll give you both of them. Um, but there is a kitchen and a pantry that are virtually untouched. Um, let's see, can I do it like that? And then, sorry, I, I, I almost hate that this map is so isometric because it makes it harder to like I can reveal things in, in squares. Right. Um, but anyhow, uh, yeah, so kitchen here, pantry here. Uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of like ruined things from being just exposed to time and the elements. But there are some things that are still potable if you trust them. It seems like uh, the good news is that these demons were not especially interested in eating human food. Uh, so they didn't really go through here. Just small birds. Um, I'm not into picking any of that up. Yeah, like I'm not. Do, are, are, do we have to be hungry? Because I'm not appetized at the moment. Right. Yeah. It's the gullet's yearning. I, <laughs> like, My gullet's I not yearning for like that. Just before this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Uh, so, uh, I'm a pescatarian. Good. We got. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I'm just gonna blow open this door back here. Tilhiri, are you still by the evil writing? No. Sorry. And sorry, which door are you? Oh, that one. Um, and then that one's another. I'm just gonna reveal this whole chunk here. Whoops, that's not how that works. Um, but that seems to be a barracks. But let me see if there's any Why is the anything back from the barracks. Uh, servants' quarters specifically. Um, Said so someone has to keep the forges going overnight, so you would have uh, third shift. Mm -hmm. Like the firehouse. Right. Okay, so uh, there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Um, the beds are in kind of like disarray. You don't think anyone, they were basically like just slept in before these people were presumably murdered, uh, but uh, yeah, that's, you, you think that they probably might even still have personal affects if you were looking for them. No, I just want to kill stuff. Yeah, I don't need any more affects. Unless right. there's a giant dusty diary on a tomb that says we cannot get out. Um, yeah, I'm ready to move on. All right. Uh, so, okay, I'm which checking, I'm listening at this door. Benzor, I love your. I just sit like, near, like running back and forth, and <laughs> being like, "Now this one, now this one." <laughs> well, I'm I'm very systematical, and I missed this door here, and it made me very upset that I had a dark spot, and I was as I'm working my way around. But I had to go back um, and fix that. So that's a curious area. Um, this actually has something different. Uh, you notice that there is this kind of pumice stone that's in here but it's warm to the touch. Oh, and there's a lot of it. There's like a giant stack of it. It's almost like the wall that's in this room. Can I investigate it to know more? Can this I is, talk to the pumice? The, this is specifically uh, a nature check to know what this is. Nature check. I got that. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. You got good nature. Oh, Duratan was yeah. Oh, very nice, Duratan. 
This seems to be the primary fuel source for this forge. Um, it is a special kind of stone called, uh, you know, desert stone. Uh, it's flammable like coal, but it's it's kind of got that glassy look like pumice. Or I guess, no, that, that strike what I just said. But it's got like that kind of like pitted look like pumice is what I meant to say. Uh, but you, you burn it and it burns hotter than, than the coal or fire and for longer. So this is like your perfect... Uh, you know, material for, for glass works and even you could even like forge a weapon just, just using this, this, uh, on this, uh, this, uh, desert stone for, uh, fuel. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, hey, I, I want to, I want, I want to take some of I want to take some of this. Uh, I'm going to, I, I was, oh, well, I'm going to move my little guy. Um, I'm going to come over and, uh, is it, is it easy to break? Uh, to a degree, but it's it's very brittle and sharp, and you would think that if you weren't careful, Perfect. you could bust your hand up real bad on it. Okay, I just need some shards. Um, can I get some shards? Like, uh, small pieces. Yes. Arrowhead-sized pieces. Somebody yeah. in, the, in the dross. Yeah. All right. Most cool. Cool, because I want to take 10 pieces and uh, outfit the uh, other 10 arrows I have um, with some flammable rocks. I like the idea. That's fantastic. In fact, I like that so much. I'm going to give you an inspiration point for that. Well, <laughs> thanks. I'm just thinking of shit, setting shit on fire like I do most of my waking day. But I appreciate <laughs> that. <clears throat> so, do you know what that means to get an inspiration point? Um. I, I, I think it, it helped me re-roll things or help someone else re-roll things. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you mark it on your sheet in the little right. inspiration hub. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, of course we don't have any we don't have any way to start a fire, but I guess that's something I'm gonna worry about later. Um, well, no, I must wait, no, we must have we must have between between a, the, all of us who hang out in the wilderness, I'm sure someone has a, a striker yeah. or something. We've played like six times already. We know how yeah, to start fire. Right. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Um, I also have an inspiration point, so we don't forget if we need it in a pinch. Um, I think you only get one a game. Oh, like the whole it's, team, the whole party gets one per game. No, no, it's no. uh. It's you use it or lose it for session. If you get like, if you get it, it's only for that session. Can you roll over minutes. Oh, you so the, you mean the inspiration point that I got last week is gone now? Yeah, and that's th that rule, though harsh, is meant to encourage you to use it. Um. Well, had I known, <laughs> I, I, I would have had a really inspiring fish fry for you. Yes. Would have been just elevated food. Uh, so let's see. Um, okay, what would you like to do next? Let's let's go let's go get in some bigger rooms. We're like we're hanging out in the cafeteria. Um, in the pumice uh, room. Yeah, in the pumice room. Um, let's go. I mean, I, 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 there's like guards in the halls and whatnot, I know, and I, I personally am really digging this skulking around because it's sort of my natural thing. Um, but, um, but we should, we should make for larger, larger territory. Yep. All right. It looks like we maybe have someone who's listening at that door. Could I get a, a listen check? Sure. Yeah, so it, it seems as safe as the other rooms have been. Sinzor, go for it. Sinzor. Very nice. All right, let's bust it open. All right. So there's a number of things that happen kind of in succession. You open you open this door into darkness, um, although you can see into darkness, so that's fine. Uh, but as you're kind of trying to adjust to the lack of light, Especially with a light coming in from because someone is either got a light on or is a uh, star form, right? Not yet. No, I haven't. Not yet. It. Okay, so never mind. Strike that I said that. Uh, so yeah, you 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 break into this room that is completely in darkness, and your eyes are slightly adjusting. Um, but as you do, 
uh, you realize that these uh, two hulking figures that in your dark vision appear as complete blackness, um, just that they, they are void of light, uh, basically convene on you and are going to try and attack. And then we will roll initiative, um, but they will get advantage because they basically were so quiet and stealthy that you would you didn't notice them until you stepped through the door. Um, and I'm going to make this guy bigger so you can kind of see the detail. Uh, actually, let me put him here. Oh. But <laughs> they're, they're like human yeah, chicken eggs. But yeah, they, they're basically like big kind of chicken people. Uh, but they don't don't let that fool you. They they are vicious and mean and uh, muscly. They're, they're kind of hairy. Um, wait, why, are you, why is there an X on you? Did you die? Already? Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just messing around with other stuff, and I I can't figure out how to take it off. Now. We, okay. well, we didn't realize that yeah, yeah, Finzer is desperately frightened of chickens. <laughs> you could say that she's got a chicken of them. Um, I'm now ready dies on the spot. All right, so we are rolling for initiative. Yes. Can you remind me how I do that? Click I'm sorry, on your... before. Oh, actually, I'll just click on what? You click on your icon on roll 20 and then click on initiative, which is next to your armor shield on D and D beyond. Armor shield. And if you, if you happen not to do that, don't go. Oh, I see. Do I have time to run away like two minutes? Tell me again how I do this. Yeah, I, I need time to figure this out too, so I would go for a risk. Okay, okay. and this is going to be our first full blown combat, so that's fine. Don't don't feel bad. Um, and then let's see, Wolfpack, you are there. Okay, and uh, sorry if I rolled twice. I don't know how I did that. No worries. That that happens. It's just kind of a weird dint of the of the of the um of roll twenty. Oh, look at Vincent. awesome, excellent. Uh, Winna, did you need help in uh, uh, rolling initiative? Yes, I do. So no click worries. on your little Winna on roll 20. Yeah, make sure your, your token is selected and has the, like, the three uh, circles over her head. Then you're going to go over to your character sheet um, on on D D Beyond and real close to where the armor class is, there should be something that says initiative. Oh. And you're going to hover your uh, your um, cursor over it, and it's going to give you another one of those red dice with a B on it. Click that, and it will roll your initiative and put you on the initiative. Oh, look at her. Oh. How hey. did they have over 20 initiative? I mean, honestly, I don't think anyone's got, like, the the lowest is 11. That's nuts. Right. Um, in We're fact, ready to fight, goddammit. Is for six? <laughs> These guys. There are so few of these guys. I'm going to go ahead and give them their separate initiatives. But there we go. Um, all right. So with all of that being said, as long as there's no conflict over who wins ties, I'm just going to let the the way that it it uh, kind of landed to be be the way. So when uh, you go first, oh. you notice that uh, Finsor is up ahead. You hear more so than see because it's just pitch black. Something sinister. It's that same voice, but instead of saying anything, it's just kind of growling uh, and, and kind of chuckling under its breath. So you know that your friend Finzar is in danger. The, the downside is you can't see because you don't have dark vision, so you don't know what's going on. But should tear off his limbs. Uh, and let's see, that's Winna's turn, which is fantastically eff efficacious. Uh, and Finzor, it is your turn, and you have been spared their wrath, and they've turned their backs to you. 
Okay. Um, and I'm, am I uh, within striking distance? Can I like move and attack? You absolutely can. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to go towards this dude here on my right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to swing as hard as I can on the back of his head. Do it. With my war hammer <laughs> of silver. Spoon. Oh, which one do I roll? Um, so one? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll that one. And then we'll just say it's silver. That should be plain enough. Okay. Um, okay, oh, there we go. Um, you know, I will say that because the, the this particular being's back is turned, you get advantage, so you can roll one more time if you like. Yes, please. Oh, oh that's much better. <laughs> One-handed or two-handed? Dealer's choice. Well, heck yes, I'm going to bludgeon two-handed. <laughs> so you bring this... The silver spoon down on this uh, creature's head, um, and uh, y y you know, um, cultural connotation not so notwithstanding, uh, you bash in the back of his head until there's a dent, and you can kind of see whatever internal organs these demons have, kind of like leaking out of this thing's uh, ears or ear holes, because it's a kind of a chickeny thing. It's not really got ears, but you get the idea. You you hurt this thing real bad. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to do with your turn or that you can do with your turn? I don't think I can do anything, right? Um, sometimes you can take a bonus action, uh, but at this point, that's usually just for people who are dual wielding, which you're not, which is totally fine, but I just wanted to make sure before I just uh, glossed over you. I'm good. Uh, awesome. So, Volpec, it is your mm -hmm. turn. Um, I believe you have dark vision, so you probably witnessed all of this. Can yeah, I, um, why does the thingy have a 19 and be below Wolfpack? Um, oh, that was because I goofed. So I guess it actually goes after or before Wolfpack. So sorry. That was this guy. And uh, he's basically so sorry, we just, that just up ends things and I apologize. Uh, but he is going to turn around and make two attacks with his claws. And these claws are massive, they're like bigger than each of your heads. Uh, much bigger in some cases. And um, let's see, Finzor, what is your armor class? 18. Okay, so the first attack did not hit, but the second one does. And we're going to call it that much, and it deals nine damage to you uh, as it just rakes its massive chickeny claws right down uh, your shoulder and uh, just kind of pulls back with uh, little chunks of skin under its uh, chicken talons. Do I need to knock that off myself on my thing? Um, I can figure that out for you. What is your arm or your hit point total, like your maximum? Hit I mean, I can do it myself. I figured out, I mean, where to punch it there. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, that was what the uh, chicken demon does. Now it's both pecs turn. So, so let me let me make let me make sure I understand what just happened. Finzer didn't Finzer just bash its brains out? Yes. It's not dead and, yet. No. But it's not. But it's not dead yet. No. And then there's this. Then there's this other one that's it got full health bar. Correct. All right. Um. So. But my vantage point, I'm, I don't feel like arrows are going to do a hell of a lot. Um, just because, I mean, like, I, it's very close. I mean, like, maybe. Uh, it's just like from where I'm, from where I am right now in the room. I don't know if it, does this matter. Um, like, I don't feel like I have the shot. Can you um, forward? It would be a tricky shot. Basically, firing into melee gives them a plus two armor class bonus. So right. it's just a little harder to hit, but yeah, you can I'm still not, do it. So, so here, well, here, no, here's the here's the deal. I'm not. I'm just not going to go that way. I'm I'm going to sure. play support. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I know that Calhiri's coming next. I can see Calhiri moving in. Um, mm -hmm. Calhiri's got it. Calhiri's got the 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 magic candelabra. 
um, what I'm going to do is distract the um, the unharmed chicken demon by casting a minor illusion. Um, okay. And what I want to do, because it's not a very large illusion, uh, I can make small things. Um, what I'd like to do is make something like a vampire bat that goes around its head bothering it um, and distracting it. Sure. Uh, yeah, the like, illusion of a, it doesn't even have to be like, it doesn't have to be like a perfect bat, you know, they're just like flappy, flap, flap, flap. Sure. Um, I kind of want to, like, I want to make it fake attack the thing. That's perfect. That's excellent. You don't have to roll for this. Basically, it's distracted and just kind of like wildly swinging its, its uh, gangly arms at it. Um, not really understanding that it's not even really there. Uh, so that's perfect. You have done an, a great job. Um, and so then we go to Kalhiri. Kalhiri, you can attack this creature as it is distracted, and you would get sneak attack. Or you could also at attack this creature because it is next to one of your allies and also get sneak attack. Okay. So hold on. So Volpec distracted. And what did you cast, Volpec? I cast a, I cast minor illusion. To give you a uh, give you an opening, so it's it's it okay. now thinks there's some sort of bat flying around attacking it. Okay. Um, she's gonna move over here stealthily and stab this motherfucker. Do it. What are you stabbing it with? The short sword. Right, fantastic. So you stab at this creature with the short sword. The good news is uh, you caught it completely off guard, and you got like a you, you got a really good stab into its uh, midsection. The bad news is um, it definitely seems to resist the cut of your sword, almost like you're just banging against the concrete wall. Like you feel that this thing is far denser than it should be. And it, like your your stab almost like kind of gets rebuked it back you know at you as the as if you were just kind of trying to stab an oak tree with a butter knife, but not hey, like when your chicken. chicken's too tough. <laughs> People use the silver, god damn it! I... <laughs> um, but it is Define this silver. creature's turn, and it is. To lash out its attacks uh, between you and the Lasse demon because it's like I don't like this little punk ass, um, but it is going to try and hit you. Uh, Calhiri, what is your armor class? Or I can probably thirteen. Okay, it does hit you. Um, it does not hit the Lasse demon, uh, and it does Good. do ten points of damage as it just kind of backhand claws you. Um, that's not good. And yeah, that that's probably most of your hit points. Yeah. Um, and, and also <laughs> most of your blood. Uh, okay, Duratan, you are next. Oh boy. Um... Can't decide if I want to run in and just slash it with the uh, the butter knife or uh, try to eldritch blast it, but I'm not sure if I would do anything. So which one of them is damaged? Uh, the bottom one. Technically, this one is damaged. You hit it, and you did some damage, but not as much as it could have been. Uh, this one down here is more damaged, considerably more. Okay. Uh, we'll just go in. Uh, yeah, Duratan's gonna run in and attack the same one that Jinzor is attacking. Um, and just go ahead and use the long sword because we're gonna assume that works. Go for a long sword, right? Butter knife. Yeah, the butter knife. Got it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh no. Uh, which one did you attack? Uh the bottom one that Finzor was. Okay, yeah, sadly that's that's a miss. Bummer. Um Rift, what would you like to do now that you are 
top to back. All right. So, um, sorry, this is going to be a little metagaming. I have some questions about my healing abilities. Um, so I, huh? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so circle of stars, uh, I am definitely going to activate the, I want to activate the chalice, but I don't actually know how many different actions I can cram into this. Mm -hmm. I've got a silver trident. I want to activate the chalice. And I have first level cantrips of, and I, the thing is, I can't, I don't know the difference between cure, wo cure wounds and healing word. I'm not sure which one. I wanted to which one yet. So what I want to do is stab something with a trident, activate my chalice and cure a wound, which seems like too many things uh, um, in one turn. Yeah, let me, let me try and figure out what the best course of action is. I will tell you that, so cure wounds, cures more, okay. but you have to be right next to the person and it takes your whole action. Um, healing word can be done from a distance. It heals less, but it also takes a bonus action, which means you kind of do other stuff with your regular okay. action. So, I'm going to say that's um, what I'm going to pick. I'm going to, I picked it up with pirates. I had, you know, it just, you know, fix them up. Fast and dirty, mm -hmm. shout at them across the the poop deck and uh keep moving. All right. Um storm. So coming. roll that makes sense. one D four plus your wisdom modifier. Okay, so so roll one D four. Um can you remind me how to do all that? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. So you do a type D four or alternately. You can also go to the very far left hand side and you're going to see like that big dice towards the bottom of like the little kind of menu dial and uh it'll it'll basically like give you a big giant menu of, of things to roll okay so, so I, can, click, like, I click on the d4 how do i add the what did you say which modifier your wisdom modifier like you could just tell me what it is and you know um so wisdom is um somewhere oh plus four plus four wisdom Ooh, fantastic so that's seven point which is fantastic who do you give that to i'm, I'm thinking calhiri probably calhiri you're uh you're in danger right so after the healing that's a net loss of uh oh i'm sorry i didn't even see you roll because i had rolled a d4 um, but that's a so you gain eight hit points. So right now you are two under your maximum. Yeah, really yeah. Thank you. Got you. And then there's a bonus action because I and so healing word is yeah definitely going for that. So for a bonus action, um, I guess I should I turn on the chalice or should I swing a trident? Turn on the chalice. Let's see. Um, and that'll give Winna visibility. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna activate. What does it take? Let's see if I can do this. Starry form, chalice. Um, that's activated. Yeah, so you can heal someone else uh, even more hit points if you want to. Zor. Here's some hit points. So, what do I do? This time you roll a D8 and you add your wisdom bonus. So you can do like a D8 and then we either just add four in our heads or you can do it manually if you look so. Okay. Uh, Finzer, you heal six points of damage. Thank you. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> um and then that's probably it for me i feel like a waste of a silver trident no that's okay you'll don't get your chance to use it yet trust me okay. on that uh, is the room lit up now What's oh doing? yeah i'm glowing <laughs> and one of these days i'll figure out how to use like the real fancy like settings in this game so that you'll it, you'll it'll make sense when 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 i use it but i need to set aside like a few hours to figure it out um and it will actually like show on the map like how the light affects the the room and all that business but that's for another day um 
Jen, so sir, that... how much damage did the chicken demon do to you before? The chicken damage. Chicken did eleven, and then I got back eight. So you just got back six. Six, yeah. So I'm at seventeen right now. Okay. All right. So uh, we rolled back uh, through the initiative to the very top with winner. Um, I have a question. So I can. I'm trying to figure out what animals I can shape shift into. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know on second level it can't. Like the limitations are just no flying and no running speed. Does that mean anything else is up for grabs? Uh, yes, within a certain, and this, I'll, I'll explain what this means. It, it has to fit within a certain challenge rating. Mm. And basically a challenge rating is kind of a shorthand for how badass is this monster. Um, so uh, I'm gonna give you a list, but if you could think of like anything that is kind of small sized, and is a is a, a beast an animal you can turn into it um and so that could be like a fox or um a, well not a crow a fox or like a penguin or like a pomeranian or a cat a penguin. <laughs> if there's anything we need right now it's a penguin <laughs> and does it have to be something she's seen and yeah, you world, have to be familiar with the creature. It can't be like some something on the other side of the world you've never seen, or like a little, uh, um, you know, one of those little tiny dinosaurs that Thomas just like doesn't exist this. anymore. Although in this world, it does. Um, there you go. She she hasn't she's uh, lived in the woods. Can we presume that like any kind of emotion. woods animal, mm -hmm. something woodsy, um, it just can't fly or swim. Why it can't swim? Oof. Can I be a snake? Can I try to? Yes, absolutely. Be a oh, yes, Winna. And go and strangle him? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, let me just look, because what I cannot remember is what the CR is that you can turn into. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Wild shape. One fourth, actually, so that's not bad. Um, I think you can you can turn into a constrictor snake. And I'm just gonna look that up real quick. And this is where I'm gonna say um, um, druids are tricky because of their myriad options, but this is it's also what makes them really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and post the stats for the snake. The good news is you can take this stat block, which is what they're called. You can literally do the same thing with your character. And like, you're gonna see on the constrictor snake, hey, I've got a constrict ability. I just click on that thing and it'll just pop right up. Um, like it should, but it's taking forever. But um, if you click on that and open up that page, you can treat it like your character sheet. Because for all intents and purposes, you are that 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 beast for the time being. But do you want to try and wrap yourself around one of I these do. creatures? Yeah. Awesome. So I just clicked on that constrict, but you can. You, I'll be nice. You can take the better of mine or yours. So you go ahead and click on that constrict ability on the on the constrictor snake. And mine is definitely the better one. Which one did you constrict? Um, the one, I think that one that's like further, like the one that's closest to me, right? That's weakest. Uh, go ahead. So we'll go ahead and apply that. It was a mighty strangle on this creature, but it still resists you because you're not uh, magical or, or silvered, but it's fine. You still do a significant portion of damage. And it is grappled. Uh, in addition to being grappled, it is restrained. So it can't move. Uh, attack rolls against it have advantage. Uh, and its attacks have disadvantage. So that was mighty. That was fantastic. You did a really cool thing there. It is like wrapped up in your coils and just like not really sure what to do uh, and kind of teetering. Um. <laughs> So when a, that was when was that? 
What's that? Uh, no, which one did you um, grapple? Oh, the one right by um, by Finzer and uh, Duratan. Okay. Um, so that was super synergy time. So Finzer, uh, you can attack with advantage. Um, and just to give you an idea, before you click on your uh, attack, if you hold down the shift key, it will turn your little uh, icon into a, a green, and that will then make it advantage. Okay. So um, uh, I, if I swing the war hammer down on this dude's head, am I going to uh, like put Winna no, at risk here? No, it should be totally fine. Okay. That is a hit. These creatures, those sturdy, are basically just not wearing any armor and relying on their tough skin and bones. Tough as they may be, not tough enough for a silvered weapon. So go ahead and click on the pink word that says Warhammer, and that it should uh, give you the damage as well. Fantastic. So Let's this picked up one-handed. Yeah, you 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 kind of like go for a backswing and. Uh, um, bend its beak in a really grotesque way, uh, but you don't feel terribly bad for it. Um, all right, so that was Finzer, and then we go now to that creature. It actually kind of um, growls and grunts, and it's going to try and get out of your um, your constriction there, Winna, but that's actually going to take its whole turn doing so. Um, And of course, on my roll 20 is just being, and it does not break free. Your difficulty class is 14, so it just, it struggles and moves, does not get free of your constriction. So you are, uh, <laughs> you are uh, able to hold it fast and uh, keep it, uh, uh, keep it vulnerable for your allies to attack. So then we go to um, Are they called something other than chicken demons? Um. Not anymore. <laughs> Are these called the Lasse? Uh, no. The Lasse uh, officially? Were rat the Poyos Hermanos? Los Poyos Hermanos. Hermanos. They're Los Poyos Hermanos. Okay. Okay. Officially, always cooking. That, that these... wasn't me. That was Christian, by the way. I don't get credit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> or no, I'm sorry. I put something else. That's uh, Ignore that. Uh, these things are called Shedim. Anyway, so question for you. Um, if I run and attack, are those two separate options? Because I'm the only one outside the fight right now, and I don't um, want to be. So you can run and attack without penalty. Fantastic. So um, so here's what I want to do. Um, I don't, in, in this small room, I don't really feel like I need to shoot. Um, so what I want to do is just grab one of the holy water arrows and just run and fucking stab that one of them. Sounds fantastic. Okay. Go for it. Just just go full and Arya Stark on it. Yes. Um, so how do I... <laughs> I'm standing over Kalhiri, a.k.a. the one that's messed up that's, that's getting bedeviled by my fake bat. Um, yeah, so, so... To, to simulate this, just to make mm -hmm. it easy, I want you to make an attack with like a dagger or something. So if you want to just click on that on your character sheet. Right. Um, but the damage will be different because you're attacking with holy water. Got it. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna I'm clicking my dagger. Boop. And now I'm gonna click my dagger. It says wielding. Oh shit. Um, how do I how do I roll for it? Um, there's gonna be like a little symbol to the far left of the dagger that's like two cross swords. You're gonna hover over that. And then it's going to show you a red dice that you have to click on that dice. Hmm. This is in my equipment, right? Uh, no, you, you should be looking at your actions. Oh, gotcha. And as long as it's ah, equipped, okay. it'll pop up as an action. Okay. Absolutely fabulous. So you hit that creature. 
basically the arrow is like a dagger and we all know from legolas stabbing an orc with one arrow and then shooting another orc with the exact same arrow so badass uh that that's basically <laughs> what you do but in addition to that uh you deal even more damage because the holy water is completely inimical to this creature um and so you stab it and then it starts like a, a fast motion kind of like a, a brown recluse bite it just kind of eats away at its skin leaving a gaping massive gory wound um and so which do you attack this guy down here uh i was actually going for the top one um That's the one that was yeah the one that was standing over uh because this one's kind of uh, as, far, as far as i know that one's kind of bleeding out so the, i was yeah. going to go for the stronger one yeah, so you deal a, a fantastic amount of damage to that thing, and it is not in good shape. Um, and the first time that anyone has really noticed in this fight, this thing shows fear. Like they were, they were, they were confident and, might I say, cocky. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> real cock of the walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but now this specific one is kind of like it, it's just the. Uh, um, it wants to nope out of there. Uh, Wolfpack, anything else you would like to do before I move to the next person? Um, yeah, I want to roll into the corner as I'm going to take myself. I'm taking myself to the corner where I have a good vantage. OK, I will say that you can do that. Uh, Calhiri, it is your turn. Both of these creatures have been dealt grievous amounts of damage. Um, the one to the south is in a very precarious position that you think you can take advantage of. If any of them is close, closer to death or at least destruction, it is that one. Okay. No, that doesn't actually work. Oh, but I can cast a cantrip just because I want to, right? If you want to, yeah. I'm going to alter the appearance of my eyes and make them show flames. Okay. <laughs> and then... The, you're going to scare the infernal creatures by acting scary? I'm just going to be like, who do you, like, you think you're infernal? Fuck you. And I'm going right. to show my flame eyes, um, and then I'm going to stab down into its head, missing all of Winna's coils with the short sword again. Nice. Do it. And don't forget you have advantage, so hold that shift key before you click it, and then it'll turn it green. Oh! I never did that. Very nice. That was almost a critical hit. Uh, you do massive damage to this creature. It is. It does still kind of have a very uh, hefty yield to it, but just because if you're attacking with a normal weapon. But still, uh, you've done terrible damage to this thing and you're you're kind of uh making it not unlike play-doh as its body is kind of mutilate, mutilated around uh you imagine that these things kind of are summoned from the underworld and make these they have these kind of like play-doh bodies that even though they have function and internal organs you can kind of like bash them around and and uh, do terrible damage to them until their bodies just give out so they don't kind of follow the same rules that like people with you know anatomy do they, they're just like big gumby type creatures uh it doesn't make it any less gruesome as they're being just completely dismantled uh anything else with your turn calgary i don't think there's anything else for me all right and i will say it is the turn of this creature and it is intensely frustrated. Um, it is um, using one claw to swat at this bat and finally figures out that it's illusionary and just kind of curses an inferno um, before moving here. Whoops, that's the bat. Before moving here, and I will say it is actually going to take a swipe at Kelhiri. And misses. In its frustration, it just goes wide and, and swings right over your head. Um, all right, Duratan, it is now your turn. Come on, Duratan. All righty. Um, I will try the long sword again. Go for uh, it. 
And it's silver, right? Yeah. Yeah, the the butter knife, the silver butter knife. Come on, and you're silver. attacking the, the more damaged one, right? Uh correct. Okay. You have advantage, so don't forget, before you click it, you hold that shift key, you attack with advantage. Uh, oh. That works just as well. I don't know. You I... hit... Nice. Are you using one hand or two? Uh, let's go for two. All right. So we will say Genie's Wrath. Ooh, very nice. Um, that is, as a matter of fact, just enough. You slice, um, basically, like, lop it off from shoulder to shoulder, and this creature's kind of, like, bust, if you will, flops down onto the ground as it just kind of dissolves into a, a brackish muck. Um, not pleasant to be uh, wrapped around there, Winna, but, you know, it comes with the, comes with the territory. Um, but it is dead, at least insofar as its corporeal body, and it has been sent back into the abyss to suffer some uh, 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 yet uh, undetermined uh, punishment for failing at its uh, material uh, quest. But uh, yes, Duratan, you, you were fantastic, and you destroyed this thing's form. Yeah, you uh, did. Any, anything else with your turn? Uh, I think that's about all I can do. Okie doke. Rift, it is now your turn. Down at the okay. bottom of the issue. Come on, Rift! Don't, don't worry, Winna. I'm going to summon some water later. We'll get you We'll get you rinsed off. Uh, in the meantime, um, I want to... Nobody else has been injured um, anymore so far. so far. So what I'm going to do is huck my net to encumber the creature. Um, and then I want to drive the trident up through... Uh, the bottom of its jaw into its brain pan. Okay, absolutely. So go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to roll to see if it avoids the net, and it does, sadly, but it, like in moving away from the net, it gives you a perfect shot at, okay. its, uh, at its waddle, let's say. So go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, question. So, um, for, so I'm looking at my net right here in mm -hmm. my actions and attack, and I've got a plus five. Oh, so yeah, I'm sorry. That's so. Let's let's rewind on that. Go ahead and make an attack roll with your net. Um, and that is a hit. So it is entangled in your net. So now go ahead and make an attack with, with your trident. trident with advantage. So hold on to that shift key, click on your trident attack, and it should attack with advantage. That's a hit as well. Click on the pink word trident and it should do damage. All right, and whoops. Weird. Uh let's see. Minus net. So yeah, you've you've uh severed several of its arteries and it bleeds black black blood all down its chest and arms and it's kind of like speaking through this gurgle of, of blood in its throat not really making any sense but it seems uh less intimidating you think than it tried to be um but that is fantastic you've you skewered its neck fairly well um and that is that is that do you wish to do anything else there rift um so i also have a plus three within a five foot reach for unarmed strike can I like kick it backwards while it's tangled in the neck with a trident in its throat to like just further? Give it a shot. All right. That is totally a hit. Go ahead and well, you can roll, but like your unarmed strike damage, unless you're a monk, is static. So you'll always do two damage, but you do, you knock it back with that attack and um and just kind of add insult to injury to injury um so yeah it is it got knocked back though a little bit from that that was badass absolutely um winna it is now your turn you're still a snake you can decide to in, to uh wrap this creature up as well and, and try and mess with it if you if you wish how close is this creature to death it's um 
let's see. Oh, close to death. It's in bad shape. It's looking like it's not long for this world. Because I kind of want to bite it, like right where Rift already weakened him. Go for it. Blah. It's going to be gross, but. Like taking a big old bite out of uh, Play Doh. Yeah. I want you to know I thought you meant Plato the first time. <laughs> there, but these monsters are but shadows on the wall. Apparently, <laughs> well, that I'm okay. I was like, I'm like, I'm not getting the reference. <laughs> um, but you but meant yeah, uh, Plato like Gumby. Now I understand. Yes. <laughs> so that was a miss. I'm 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 afraid. Um. Right. And uh, so, yeah, you try and bite it, and you do kind of like bite into this kind of clay like form and just don't really get any kind of purchase on it. And so, you just kind of protract your, your snake like mandibles. Uh, and uh, no, no worse for the wear, thankfully. Um, anything else with your turn, Runa? Um, nope. Can I? Since we're nearing the end, can I, well, hopefully we're nearing the end, can I turn back into a winner? Yes, absolutely you can. So you do that. Uh, Finzer, it is your turn. This thing has been harried uh, towards the back of the room. You can press the advantage and, and go uh, make another attack. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to, I like smashing heads. I want to smash the head. Wait, you're not going to like see if it just needs directions somewhere or <laughs> hand it a pitch? <laughs> no, we're going to kill it! <laughs> we, we need to see if it if it needs any shopping done at the market. Or <laughs> if it needs some soup. Oh, bring it some it's just soup. hungry. If it has a thorn in its paw, maybe. <laughs> Or just has a misunderstood past. Maybe it just oh it never won that pie eating contest and just has not, hasn't been right ever since that day. But anyway, I feel so like I, all creatures from hell have misunderstood pasts. That's how they get there. It's, it was a bad chicken in life. It went to hell. Now it's back, and we're gonna kill it with a spoon. Is that uh, a, or a regular roll? It's done. But yeah, um, it is a regular attack. It's not with advantage this okay. time. We're trying to make the chicken demon a kind of character. <laughs> Go ahead and, oh and click God. on the pink word. <laughs> Fantastic. Two-handed. <laughs> you turn it into uh, just this grotesque figure. It's like the T-1000 when it had like one too many shots. <laughs> and it just like looks like it's this kind of Picasso-esque um, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate figure, but still somehow alive and clanging to this material uh, realm. Uh, and as a matter of fact, so no, the one that goes later is dead. Wolfpack, it is you and Kalhiri that can uh, potentially land a final attack. What are you doing, Volspec? Um, does it? How close is this? I can't. First of all, I can't believe this thing isn't dead yet. Uh, right. It is. It is inches so away. Like you it's think. Inches away. I just don't know. I, I, here's the thing. That I feel like these are the first two chicken monsters of many potential infernal creatures, and don't really want to spend another uh, like uh, holy water arrow on them. But nothing else seems to damage them. Um, and um so i'll share a little secret um when you attack them with regular uh uh weapons they take half damage that is called a resistance so you can still damage all right and it's close enough that like if you unless you were yeah. really bad yeah I'm, I'm going yeah i'm going i'm going with my uh i've got a dagger um like can i just go dagger to the 
brain like yeah because yeah i don't want to i don't want to waste an arrow that can make them in handy i'll roll for, sure. for that da- i'll roll for regular dagger um do, do, do. okay um e- either of those is fine and you are able to Oops, slam. Sorry, I, it, the second one was the one i the one i meant to do so yeah no worries um you slay Real. the demon with your knife as you just kind of you you leap up and you kind of like stick the dagger in and let your weight drag you down as you you separate the creature um and you fillet it uh fairly fairly up, uh, effectively uh and they're done and congratulations you finished your first battle Yay! Yay! if i had thought i would say do nothing it's bleeding out on the floor wait till when is turn again with her little oh, let, let, let Winna take care of it. <gasps> oh. oh. Hadn't I'm sorry, that. you was, were was happy Winna's... with our victory and I had to ruin it. <laughs> well, it was, well, no, 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 because Winna's, Winna's turn is so far away. It's like we several turns just, away. And there's, just, there's like, a chance it could, it could do something water. while, like, lash out. Well, we and that's kind of the tricky thing about the knife is that you you can you can try and go for it to kill the creature, but um, it is a knife and not not uh, likely to do a lot of damage. So it's tricky. It's it's all kind of a gamble. So um, what's that? You need it for the last thing. Oh you can just mm-hmm. you have to make the killing the killing stroke. Uh, but it, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't to be this time. But that's okay. There there will be more opportunities. <laughs> yeah, that's the sort of thing to keep in mind from now on. I, that's good thinking. Um, when I, I'm gonna nut something super nasty for you and just let you stab it to death. I promise. <laughs> uh, but there you go. That was a fantastic, uh, fantastically run combat. Uh, I, I would not have thought that y'all. Uh, had, so some of you had never done that before, and others of you did really well and and kind of guiding it. So thank you. That went really. Um, smoothly i think and uh, i had a lot of fun but that concludes our session for today um does anybody have any questions about the uh, the action so far or any of the maybe the big questions that have been brought up from the uh various things that have happened and the the, the revelations that you've so far come upon uh, yes. for investigating go ahead um so that took a lot those guys took a lot more hits than i would have expected man-sized chicken monsters to have yeah. Um, and is there any way we can perceive how something, how strong something is before we start fighting it? Or um, is, so we just find out? That's kind of part of the thing, isn't it? Like, well, the DMs they, don't tell you what the hit points are. The <laughs> sum of what happened here, and I, I don't know if you, if you necessarily noticed, but they realized you were there and they laid a trap. So as such, you you kind of bowled into this room and got pincered by them. So you didn't have an opportunity to observe them first. But if you did have an opportunity to observe them and, and maybe make some kind of a, like an arcana role, a history, a religion, whatever is appropriate, you might have an idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is nature. But basically, if you get the chance to observe your enemy, you might have an idea like, oh, they're going to be a lot tougher. They're going to take like way more than two hits to bring down or what have you. And just, you know, some of it is going to be eyeballing. Some of it is going to be chance. But um, when the enemy gets to drop on you, it's going to be much harder to kind of figure out, which, by the way, makes it a lot more important to to, to be methodical about going through this dungeon because the dungeon it has as much personality as monsters within it. Right. And Jen, if you could write that for because it's going to be two weeks from now in the notes that um like uh well i definitely have been appreciative of finzor just knocking down all the doors um because i am uh more much more cautious than that uh like maybe we should do a whole lot more scouting as we go um just so we don't get the drop dropped on us like that again well, I don't know. I said when we heard the dude back in the hallway, I said we should turn around and fight him. So, yeah, see, that's also not getting the that's not, not, well, not reconnaissance, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, I hear something, let's go kill it. Like, <laughs> I'm saying I we should observe 20 before opening the door, a perception 20. 
Like it's not Finzor's fault. That was pretty no, like, no, no, fault. no, not Finzor's fault at all. Yeah. Not Finzor. No, no, no. Not trying to make that. Not okay. to make that point. I'm just saying if, if there is an opportunity coming up where we might be able to do something, because that was just like fucking guys in a dark closet. Like there was nothing we could do. But there <laughs> well, might be. If we had when we heard it in the hallway. If we had scouted it in the hallway instead of like you know, exploring all of these little rooms, then we might have been able to see it. But we wanted to, instead of turning around and facing it, we wanted to scout all the rooms, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, we don't have to, like, face it, like, swing at it with an axe, but, like, we could hear it, then me and White wanted to, like, check out what the noise is. Fair. Wow. Either way, um, I have some questions about cantrips and how sure. I know them and how many I have and how many I have prepared and how many I can use. Like, I know I should have done, I did some reading, but it, I, it all fell out of my brain. Um, That's okay. Um, so I don't know if you, um, actually, let me do this for you. Uh, I'm gonna post the link to the Druid class in D&D Beyond. That's um, and what you're going to look at is that there's a big uh, messy chart, but you're second level, and so you know two cantrips. Um, and you can basically, all cantrips are like, they're, they're kind of like a category of their own. So pick two amongst the, the cantrips available to druids. Um, if you want one of them to be damaging, I can suggest some for you, because it's, it's, it's a lot to kind of muddle through. But I would recommend um, Produce Flame, Thorn Whip, or Shillelagh. And they're all very good in their own way. So, oh, so jealous. I'm sorry. I know, like, for first level, I've got Create or Destroy Water, and I've got Healing Word. Like, that's definitely... Um, but I also then get the zero-level cantrips that one of the... Correct. Okay. Well, and, now I have some decisions to make. Yes. How many? And, how ma so you said I get two. Correct. Uh, but that's I have two from the first level here. Create or destroy water. Do you mean two from each level? Uh, so you get two cantrips. Total. Total, and okay. that will go up as you level. The cantrips are kind of a finite resource. It's like you'll by the time you le reach level. Uh, 10, you'll have four cantrips total, and that's all you'll ever get. But you can swap them out as you need to. We'll talk about that. Oh, as okay. Um, but then at this current level, you have three spell slots for first level spells. So you can cast a total of three first level spells. Um, this okay. is where it's going to get tricky. Um, as a druid, you can cast or you can prepare five different spells to choose from. That you can then cast your three spells. Oh, okay. So I technically know all of the spells Correct. at zero or one level. I technically well, at, know them, but I just can't use at them. First at any level. Level. The cantrips, at you only level. know two. The first level spells, you know all of them. But oh, okay. Sorry. I thought the. My confusion is I thought cantrips was the label for the entire list. So, it is, uh, but it's. It's static. You you have to pick two cantrips from the list, and those are your cantrips for a really long time. You can swap them out, but it, the process to do so is kind of protracted. So you have to be careful about which cantrips you pick because you're kind of sort of stuck with them. Okay. I will do some reading. I also need to do that then. Yeah. No. Oops. And I apologize, spellcasting is kind of a, a, a big bowl of mixed fruit here where it's just a lot to dig into. Um, and so, you know, if, if we if you want me to coach you through it uh, a little bit more, I'm more than happy to like take time between the, uh, now and next game or like at the start of next game and we can kind of go through it a little bit more. But um, it is really tricky to just kind of figure out like, you know, how many can I prepare versus how many can I cast? and which ones are good and like what is you know what are some key uh decisions to make about that because you don't like i i, I know that when i first played i'm like oh i i kind of picked some real duds here um uh, and i don't want you to feel that way okay but i think we did great in our battle yeah you 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 all kicked some serious butt 
yeah, that was like a really good use of the diversity of strengths and powers and stuff that we had, like good creativity. I was yes. impressed. Right. I just want to see like <laughs> Durotan with that <laughs> big butter knife. <laughs> exactly. Right. exactly. Somehow, it's, somehow it's the most weapon-like thing of the weapons of the yeah. like cutlery, and yet we're he's like attack with the long sword, and we're like, yeah, you mean butter knife though, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, just checking. You're gonna spread I, some Nutella on them or something? I what was gonna say with with the clay-like uh, uh, consistency of these things, he was really just spreading these guys across the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> gross. <Massive. laughs> yeah. It's pretty gross. Um, yeah, you you all did fantastically, so I was very impressed. So we will be getting together again on April 6th. That sounds about right. I miss you. I know, right? Yeah, there's right. there's going to be a um, butter knife size hole in my heart next week. <laughs> I don't know. We can have like a chicken demon texting thread or something. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but, we'll have like a little novella story in the middle that's just done over our, you know, group uh, email. More like brunch and soup kind of story. <laughs> yes. Everybody needs to make like. Oh, guys, we have to make chicken soup with them. <laughs> oh my god! But they I say, I say, I say, I'm not a soup and chicken. I'm a demon a chicken. Bad of it to the uh, to the. <laughs> But um, I was going to say, your homework for next week, or for th in two weeks, is to write platonic Valentine cards to uh, Ronaki. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there you all are. Uh, and then um, we'll, we'll meet in two weeks. And thank you for being fantastic uh, human beings and halflings and, and, and elves and so on. Um, but uh, that was a lot of fun. So thank you for for being uh, super cool and for putting up with me and for uh, yes. all all of the cool stuff. But uh, so for viewers, we will re reconvene in two weeks. Uh, but do be excited and ready to watch the uh, what what I hope to be at least, if not the finale, then part one of the finale of our Icewind Dale Ramoth Frost Maiden game next week, uh, yes. Monday of 6 30 mountain standard time be there or be polyhedral all right uh, any any final things before i turn off the stream i'm going to use my water cantrip to, to rinse winna off from all the <laughs> signal good idea when is good as new <laughs> all right